Hey guys, it's Zipic, and welcome back to another Rust bass build. Today I'll be showcasing one of my favorite solo duo and trio bass designs. This floor stack design incorporates a new type of stability bunker, as well as plenty of box space, bedrooms, many types of peak downs, full roof access, and much more. The whole design is built off a basic starter base, which you can add on to throughout your wipe as you progress. Now let's do a tour of the base, and then I'll show you guys how to build it. Entering the base, you can immediately see the floor stack by the frame at our feet. This is to help protect against any splash damage from rockets. Heading through the airlock, we'll see a dropbox room which uses barbecues to get the maximum storage space. Passing by one locker for extra gear, we'll head up to our roof floor and bedrooms. In the first room, we have three furnaces, and if you were wondering about the metal frag cost for the base, you can see we can fit 24 hours of upkeep right here in this one furnace. You'll be surprised by the full TC upkeep, and I'll show you that in just a few minutes. Through the next garage door, we have our bedroom, as well as some inner windows in the event of an online raid. Now let's head up one more level to get to the full roof access to the base. Up here we have a bit more dropbox storage, as well as a basic airlock using a double and single door. Now let's head back downstairs and go into the peak down floor. This is one of the highlights of the base, and you'll quickly see why floor stacking makes this even better. You'll see gaps in the roof to help you take down helicopters and patrol helis, and because of the floor stack, you no longer have to worry about any players boosting into your peak downs. Obviously the windows cover 360 degrees around the base, and over here we have yet another isolated peak down which we can use to defend against any raids or door campers. And next to two more window frames, we can access both garage doors to the auto turret from the safety of inside our base. As expected, the other side of the peak down floor is an exact replica of what you just saw. And now that we've completed the upper portion of the tour, let's head back downstairs and continue on into the core of the base. Past this main garage door, we have a research table, large box, three sleeping bags, and our first main loop room of the design. And to the left side, we have our sealed stability bunker. I'm sure many of you have your doubts about this bunker as it's only held up by twig, but don't worry, I've tested this with all types of boom as well as any type of fire splash damage. Now spawning in our bunker, we have our tier 3 workbench, extra bags and box space, a few small boxes, and a barbecue. We can open up the bunker by demolishing the twig on the roof, and of course to seal off the bunker, simply replace the twig floor and build and upgrade the triangle roof in the drop down chute. Finally, opening up the last garage door, we have our main 6 blocks loot room, and to the left we have our TC behind the armored window. The upkeep for 24 hours is on the screen now, and as you can see, it's very cheap even for a solo player. Now with all that said, we can get right into building the design. I'm going to be using one of the simplest floor stacking methods, but if you need more help, go watch my tutorial in the top right hand corner. Once you finish your two square foundations and ramp piece, walk up the right side until you find the line right above this bent piece of twig. And we're going to use that line to place in the bottom of our small box. Now we're going to push ourselves into that box, and then look off to the right holding out a triangle foundation. Now let's place in the foundation, and then carefully take our hand off the mouse so we don't change the player's orientation. Stay crouched and keep your hand off the mouse as you move down the ramp by using the D key. By moving left and right, we can find the sweet spot where the two foundations will lock together. We'll place in two walls on the front side of both foundations. If there's no gap in between the two walls, we can break all the other twig and continue on with the base. If you do get a gap in your walls, make sure you break both triangle foundations and rebuild it from the ramp. Now with everything looking good, on the upper foundation we'll build off the floor plan at the core, and on the lower one we'll build off three triangles to the right. Before you do any upgrading and use your resources, make sure you can place in all the walls on top of these four foundations. If everything comes up as blue, we can upgrade the rightmost lower foundation and all the upper foundations to stone. Directly across from our lower stone foundation, we'll place in our TC on the upper triangle. And once our TC is locked, we'll place in full walls surrounding all of the upper foundations. Add in two roof pieces on top, as well as one above the TC, add in a window frame, and then we can begin working on the drop down chute. The frame next to our drop down will be stone, however the one in the core will only be wood, as it makes placing boxes much easier later on. With a bit of movie magic, I placed down all the important tier 1 deployables you'll need to start off the base. As you can see, I threw down a tier 1, 3 furnaces, some bags, a barbecue, and some small boxes. Get your furnaces cooking up metal ore right away, and it'll minimize the time you spend in the starter base. Now working on the main loot room of the base, we can add in 4 large boxes surrounding a campfire. 
Push yourself into each corner and you should have no issues when placing down all four large boxes. And you'll see how much easier it is to place in the final large box if that frame is wood, and that's the reason we didn't upgrade it in the first place. And once you finally have a garage door placed in this slot, then you can upgrade the frame to stone. Now let's head outside and we'll build ourselves an entryway. Also, you can demolish all the original twig that we had from before. We'll use this half wall and roof tile to get on top of our base. Now we're going to get the lower foundations over to the other side of the base. To do this, simply build in the same twig floor plan that I've done here. As we're only going to need the last two foundations, we can upgrade both of those to metal and then demolish the rest of the twig. Next, we'll replicate the pattern on the top side by placing in a twig square foundation off to the left. And I'll upgrade that twig foundation as well as its neighboring triangle to metal. We'll build in two raised triangle foundations next to the jump up, and we'll repeat the same thing on the other side of the base. Next, get yourself 600 metal frags and 300 stone as we're going to start working on the honeycomb layer. As the middle wall is just a buffer, we won't worry about upgrading it to metal, and instead we'll just use stone. The roof piece on the right side should be on the raised honeycomb, while the left side should be lowered. Make sure you leave the top level of that honeycomb open for now, as we'll finish it up later on. We'll repeat the same thing on the other side of the base, using a half wall on the right side. Add in the full stone wall in the middle, and then we can head down and make ourselves a new way up. And don't forget to upgrade the bottom half of the metal wall as well. Obviously, place in the roof pieces the same way as before. Right above our jump up, we'll place in a single door frame, and then we can fill in all of our second floor with stone walls. Build in a lower roof piece next to the door, and a raised one will go in the back triangle corner. There will be a small gap in the roof for now, but we'll seal it off very quickly. We'll add in the second wall for our drop down chute, and we'll make the roof wood so we can pick it out later on. Once again, for this loot room, build in the floors on the bottom layer of the floor stack, which will give us another gap that we can fill in later on. Now that all the walls are completed, we can add in the two triangles on the floor, and we'll also open up the bunker and add in this floor frame right in our drop down chute. Note that you can't place in this single door until you try from the outside of the base. Also make sure this door swings outward for the airlock later on. Next up, let's get rid of this gap in the roof and finish up the loot room. As you can see by placing in the window frame, the gap disappears. Let's do the same thing with the other gap for our dropbox room. If you're having trouble placing in the window frame, walk up fairly close, look all the way down to your feet, and it should come up as blue. We'll use a double door swinging outward to give us a basic airlock to the base for now. This should be around the time you get yourself a tier 2 workbench, so we'll go ahead and replace that for the tier 1. You can also throw down a shotgun trap right above it, along the wall. Just make sure you're still able to place in the floor stack roof piece. Let's fortify the base a little bit by upgrading the right wall in our drop down and also the right wall in our TC room. Next, let's begin working on the final layer of honeycomb for the first floor. 
Find one of the open areas missing foundations and build in a square foundation to the right and a triangle foundation to the left. They should both be stone and both be on the upper level. Now let's head around to the other side and repeat the same thing. On both sides of the base, you'll see this missing gap in the foundations. And this is where we'll honeycomb with two more metal walls. Of course, make sure the roof piece is on the lower level of the floor stack, and then head around to the other side and do the same thing. I hope at this point you have a little bit of stone saved up, as now we're going to go around the bottom floor and honeycomb all of the triangle foundations. For the final four squares, we're going to get roof pieces and face them in towards the metal wall. Don't forget the wall on the side, and then head around the base and complete the other three. Once we've completed this step, head on top of the honeycomb and build in all the roof pieces on top of each triangle. At this point, we're also ready to add in the second layer of floor stack to our metal honeycomb from the first floor. Next, let's create our final airlock by using a single door frame and a window. Notice that someone could use rockets to splash down through the gap into our first floor. So that's why we use a floor frame here to seal off the gap, and that way we're still able to replace both doors if either are broken. If you happen to have a triangle floor grill, you can throw it down in your airlock and make the jump up a little bit smoother. Now at this point, we're going to add roof access, so go ahead and pick up the wooden floor we added at the start. Notice that it's fairly difficult to honeycomb this section of the base from up top. You'll have to head down into one of the roof ramps, look all the way down and slowly walk up the ramp until it shows up as blue. When you get back up to the roof, add in the bottom layer of that honeycomb. Directly diagonal from our airlock, we're going to add in more honeycomb to match the other side of the base. To the right of that recently built honeycomb, we'll add in our first auto turret slot, and the second auto turret will go directly across the base. For the last two triangles that we did in honeycomb, add in a wall frame on the right side. Next, let's go downstairs and do some critical upgrades to the base. Make sure the rollers all face inwards towards the squares. Once all those doors are locked, we'll add in the second layer of floor stacking to our second level. And if you want to build in a floor frame for the drop down to the roof, make sure you place it on the second layer of the floor stack. Next, let's go around and upgrade all of the main core to metal. For the time, upgrade above and to the right of the TC to armored, as well as the right wall in the drop-down chute. If 
you have another player joining you, feel free to remove these furnaces and throw down a third bag, but in my case, I'm just going to use another large box. We'll do a few important metal upgrades on the second floor. We'll head outside to our auto turret slot, upgrade this wall as soon as possible, if you have auto turrets you can throw them down now, and also add in a few garage doors. Of course repeat the same thing for the other auto turret. And once we do that you'll notice the back wall of this loot room has now been upgraded to metal. Next, let's upgrade the important walls in the drop down to the roof. And finally, we'll head upstairs and begin working on the peak down floor. Head over to one of the triangles with a right side frame, and we're going to try to get in this triangle piece on the lower level of the floor stack. As you can see, it's much easier if you jump down and place it from below. Now back up to the roof, we'll go ahead and find our auto turret slot and start by placing in two window frames on both sides. If you need any help, try looking at the floor plan in the top right to find out where you are. In between the frames of the auto turret slot and the floor stack peak down, you'll see a single slot which we can place in a full wall. And this just leaves us to finish our overhanging peak downs. The stability of the single door frame in the peak down can be a little bit weird, so that's why we're going to use a wall frame beforehand to keep the stability high. To the left of our entrance to the core, we're going to add in a window frame, and directly across from that entrance we'll also add in a second window. The final slot left open will be our jump up to the roof access. Adding in the roof is very simple as it only consists of adding pieces on the top level of the floor stack. Then we'll head back down below to our peaks and fix the area where players can boost in. I'm just going to use this basic design as roof access, but if you want to change it up, feel free to do so. I recommend using the vertical embrasures instead of horizontal ones as it gives you more vision throughout your base. And I don't know about your guys teammates but mine tend to leave these type of doors open so I always key lock them instead of code lock. With all of that said, the base is now complete. The final thing I'll do is go around and add in some finishing touches.
course, when you replace the shotgun trap, make sure you're still able to build in the roof floor on top. And with adding in this last drop box on the roof, the base is now fully complete. I hope all of you enjoyed this base build and I hope it brings you some good wipes. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.